so we're back. Uh, part two of the Wah upgrade videos. We've got Elliot's Wah here. That's what we've been working on. In the last webisode, episode, video, we went through and we changed the pot. We changed the switch. Where we're at with this wall right now, my first thing that I want to try is to mess around with the transistors. Like this wall doesn't sound bad, but I want to see if we can tweak it out to do a little bit more. This wall is called Baby Blue. I don't know why. I actually bought it from somebody in Germany. I use it in the studio a lot. The new single policy of truth, the wah tones and the solo were, was that wah. Phil's on Simple Solution off EP2 is Baby Blue. It's just a really classic sounding wah. When I got that wah, I was actually really going through circuits, trying to figure out what made an old wah that sounded amazing sound amazing versus just blah wahs. Blah wah. Blah. I couldn't really find much in Baby Blue that really stuck out, except that it had mismatched transistors. Not just values, but models of transistors. When I realized Baby Blue had these different transistors, I had to remove them to measure them. Pro tip, you can't measure components in a circuit. You have to remove them from the circuit or else like passively even other components in the circuit will have an effect on it. I had to very carefully remove the transistors that you can burn them up with too much heat. Even silicon transistors. You have to use heat sinks and a heat sink is basically just something that goes on the lead of the component between the heat, the soldering iron, and the body of the component. The needy lady. Typically what I use is alligator clips. I've got some copper alligator clips that, you know, copper really pulls in heat better. You've probably seen it in the videos when I'm working on stuff, but I have a set of forceps. Forceps are great because you can use them as a handle and they lock down, but also they're a killer heat sink because they're, they have so much mass. I removed the transistors from Baby Blue and I measured them. This was probably five or six years ago at least. Long story short, I just flat out lost the measurements. So first step, I have to pull the transistors out of Baby Blue carefully, 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 and measure them again. So here we go. So now we've pulled out the transistors and measured them. Pretty different range on both of them. Uh, going through my transistors, I don't have the second model of transistor. What I do have though is bins of transistors. I'm just gonna go through them and see what I've got. I've also got some kind of wild card transistors. Uh, they're GE 214s. I mean, I only got them because 214 is like a number that recurs in my life all the time. So I actually got those originally to make a silicon fuzz, which I will do down the road. Actually, I need to make a silicon fuzz tester like I made my germanium fuzz tester. So that should be a video coming up. Anyway, now that we know the values of the transistors, time to sort through a giant pile of transistors and just find some pairs that we want to try out in it. So let's do it. So we've gone through and sort of the transistors. Things are gonna get fun now. But instead of heat sinking transistors, soldering them in, testing them, heat sinking transistor, pulling them out, heat sinking another set, soldering them in, heat sinking them, heat sinking them. What we're gonna do is 
is Jumper. If you're new to fiddling with effects pedals, guitars, and even amps, this is going to save you a lot of time. You can change components on the fly. And that's really handy to get stuff done and it not take up all of your time. So what I've made, it, I found some old transistor sockets. If you can find some, this is a great thing for you to have. They're just super handy. I think I found these ones in my dad's old workshop since he just had some random old 60s or 70s transistor sockets. They're kind of wonky, but I cleaned them up and I made them work. What I've done is I've soldered leads to these, five to six inch leads, so that I can solder these into the board of the wah, and then these leads can run outside of the wah, and so while I'm playing it, I can plug in different transistors to them. So, that said, let's do it. Some of these transistors need to go in the junk pile. Some of them were really cool. Some of them were just kind of blah. blah, blah. I found a, a pair of transistors I like. As long as we're doing jumper leads and stuff, let's just swap out inductors. I found a pile of them. Uh, I even found some inductors that forgot buying, it's like random inductors. They're not meant for WAS. They're in range to work for WAS. So I've got these old Aladdin brand inductors uh, with, I think it was 470 millihenries of inductance. The old was mostly were 500 millihenries was supposed to be, obviously there's some variance in that. And the old, very old gray Vox gray was were 250. I found actually a TDK round induct it's i mean it's the same color as the square tdk inductors but it just looks like a phasal and that is a 250 millihenry like the original gray was i can't remember where i got it but anyway we're going to test out all these inductors and the one that sounds the best we'll put it back in there Thank mm -hmm. you. 
that I have on hand. To my ears, the original just sounded the best, so I put that square TDK back in there. Now at this point, I think this wah sounds pretty good. I'm just gonna show you real quick about the vocal resistor. This is a really cool thing to do. Um, with my jumper leads, I'm going to remove the vocal resistor. Solder in leads, but they're going to lead to a pot. Vocal resistors in old wahs were usually 33. Sometimes I think they had a 68 or 100K. 100K being the top, I just found a 100K pot. What we're going to do is put it into a test box. Before it's connected to the pedal, go through and we're gonna connect a multimeter to it. Wherever it's at, like 33K, 68K, whatever, we'll just mark that down. You can do this blind too. You can just run the pot into the wah and just turn the knob until your ears tell you to stop, which is not a bad way to do it. You can just sit there and turn it, and then when you find what you want, desolder it from the board and measure the leads with a multimeter, and that will tell you the exact resistance that you want. And then from there, you can either get a trim pot or you can find a resistor that matches that as close as possible, if not exactly. So here's how you do it. This wah pedal is done. Real quick, there's a few things we didn't address in this wah. Resistors, besides the vocal resistor. Caps, extremely important, but I just didn't have any on hand and this wah didn't need it. Three, nothing is gonna make your wah pedal sound better. Or your guitar, or your amp, any of your pedals. Nothing is gonna make you sound better more than practice. So if you really want your wah pedal to sound better, practice with it. A tip for practicing with a wah pedal, find that sweet spot and just start manipulating it. Another trick, besides adjusting the sweep of the pot, is move your foot up and down on the pedal. Your brain and your ear need to lock in with your foot. That will help you. Where your brain thinks your foot should be, you're gonna find that spot like that. All right, so next week I'm gonna start in on the Leslie's. It's gonna be really in depth. So like, subscribe, tell your friends, wash your hands, spay and neuter your pets, uh, social distancing, fucking, War bonds? Are we still doing war bonds? Eat your veggies. Got any questions? Put them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. If you want to talk some shit, you can do that too. I've got time. You know, I know you're bored. It's quarantine's hitting us all. Carol Baskin totally killed her husband. <laughs>